Las apuestas cambian, ¿verdad? The Ghana Bar Association is for the Black Chess. The body will be coming out in the next 10 minutes. All of us must be seated before the body comes. Find a place to sit. When you come closer, we will show you where to sit. Family members are for these two sheds. So if you are from the family, please, you will occupy these two sheds. Chiefs. Chiefs and Queen Mothers will sit at the first, second, third. I don't know if uh, my policeman is coming as a chief or as a, but the original commander can. Wahale. Sasa la 
بيعتي بي
We continue to get aggregates of five for 1971, 72, 73, until 1974, when another student got an aggregate of five. But this was made up of nine grade ones. As 10 was the maximum number of subjects a student was allowed to offer, this result was almost the best theoretical result possible. So the headmaster, headmaster was excited uh, by this performance pioneered by Sinian Day. So he did not stop there. He went to the West African Exams Council in Accra and asked if he could look at the archives to find out if any previous result as good as this had ever been issued. He was given a set of huge ledgers, one for each year, going back to the foundation of the Exams Council in 62. It looked true, but could not find any comparable result. The former headmaster says that reading out the WAIC results to the school assembly in 1974 was a highlight of his entire career. Navasco can be proud that one of his alumni has not only the best West African school certificate a result ever issued, but that no result like it will ever be issued again. Senior John Akaribo in the Bugri, uh, in the Bugri was a trailblazer for high academic standards in Navasco. In 1969-70, Senior Inde and his classmates, um, His Excellency uh, Haruna Akka of the Accra Mail, and also Honorable Kletus Avoka, MP for this uh, constituency, and others started and published a monthly student's newsletter, which was called the Search Light. Inde was the editor of the newsletter. And it was so popular among students that it motivated the juniors to also start a second newsletter, a comment. And this second newsletter was edited by uh, Dr. Chris Ati. Some of you may know of him. Such were the nascent leadership traits and skills that we learned in Navasco. It was a vibrant, an intellectual and democratic society. No one could fail to take notice of Sinian Day, not because of his towering figure, but because of his intelligence and outspoken nature. And they always spoke his mind, no matter who it hurt. In his own words, some type of persons are considered to be stubborn. And st the stubbornness is connected with standing on your principle. If you think that something is wrong, it is wrong. It does not matter who says it is his right. No wonder that Don Inde, a student leader at the University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, was at the very forefront during Ghanaian student process against the military government in 1977-78. In 1982, in the historical days of the PNDC, your Nadia colleagues, aware of the dynamism and contribution you could make, decided to invite you from Nigeria to help in the revolution. There was ne not less than 10 Nabiya among the dispersed into exile. You were left alone, yet you stood your principles and could not be corrupted or compromised. You eventually resigned from the government, but you continued with progressive politics. Sinai Day, a KNUST trained chemical engineer, also later trained and practiced as a lawyer, as we all know, after leaving the PNDC. This marks Sinian Day out as a versatile, 
brilliant intellectual, capable of undertaking studies in any field. And boys in Ghanaian politics were natured in Navasco. You were one of those enigmatic cases of Navasco's product. Rest in perfect peace, Nadia Indeed. Honestly, <laughs> The <laughs> Come and 
On a beaucoup de gens qui ont mis des Police à sous le même pays. On a beaucoup de gens qui ont mis On a beaucoup de gens qui ont mis On a beaucoup de gens qui ont On a beaucoup de gens qui ont mis
with his refined advocacy, strong sense of ethics and dedication, the court respected each word that he uttered. Such was his stature. Oftentimes, when a contentious application was being argued in court, the court would invite him, as a friend of the court, to chime in if he was present in court that day. For all of us lawyers who have been involved in civil litigation, John in the Bugri has been a beacon. He has left an indelible mark on our generation and contributed towards the evolution of legal jurisprudence. He will continue to inspire the generations to come. Even since he commenced legal practice, ever since he commenced legal practice, he has been a household name. In the Bukri was an exceptional lawyer, charismatic, bold, and arrogant. There was nothing ordinary or run of the male about his life. He had a genius for epigram, intelligent, witty, and skilled. He knew how to carry the court along with him. He was extraordinarily brilliant, very well prepared in law and fact, extremely polite to the bench and to his opponents. Yet, with his fair presentation in a very soothing voice, he could win over arguments, both at the bench and at the bar. His presentation of cases in the courtroom was flawless. He never shied away from expressing his feelings on any platform, whether legal, social, or political. He had the courage to represent anyone who required his services, irrespective of the nature and magnitude of the charges alleged against him. Possessed of noble virtues, highly educated, extremely well read and well informed. In the book he was an intellectual of a high order. Great speaker, patient listener, an extremely enjoyable conversationalist, full of wit and humor. Time spent with him will be well treasured for a lifetime. Within the Bugri's demise, we the Upper East Bar Association have lost an eminent jurist, a great intellectual, a fearless human being, and one of the most respected members of the bar. May his soul continue to rest in eternal peace in the heavenly abode. First Thessalonians verses 4, chapter 19 to 17. For since we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring him with us to those who are falling asleep. For this we declare to you by a word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who have left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the law in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Amen. The Upper East Bar will never forget you. Rest well. We have in our midst the member of parliament for Bolgatanga East in the person of Honorable Dominic Ayine Akuritinga.
Brasil. In the waters of baptism, John and David died with Christ and rose with him to new life. It is our certain hope that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery and service, your servant John in the body, who has gone to rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. And this we ask you to our Lord Jesus. Personnels, both retired and working, the people of Kusau, the media, a very special mention of the Bulgarian Abbas representatives, are very peaceful <coughs> and cool. And I believe that indeed, even if he is to walk barefooted to heaven, he will not fear of any bends on his son, the Bokunaba. And the delegation attests to the type of person we are celebrating. In the beginning, I said that Honorable John Akarbo Ndeburi was born with his own name. Nobody gave that name to him. Even in his mother's womb, he decided that he wanted to be called Akarbu. And in the Kusal tradition, anybody called Akarbu simply means somebody comes out from the mother's womb with the umbilical called not best, with a cloth around his home. Physics, chemistry, and mathematics. His secondary education was from 19.